In this video, I'm going to lay out how to read an IKO formatted notum. From an American's perspective, you'll only see IKO formatted notums if you're flying internationally or if you're flying into a military base. For this reason, it's important for military flyers to at least be aware of how an IKO notum is formatted. More on how to decode IKO format notums can be found in the IKO Annex 15, which covers aeronautical information services. So here we have three examples of domestic and IKO notums put side by side and highlighted to really show the difference between where the information is stored in each of these notums. So this video is really gonna break down how you yourself can read the IKO notum format and get that same information out. So every IKO notum begins with this top line. The first letter in this line indicates the series. The next four numbers is the four digit notum number. And then the final two numbers in this first little block is going to be the year in which that notum was published. Next, you'll see something like notum in, notum R, or notum C. Notum in means that this is a new notum. Notum R means that this replaces a previous notum. And notum C means that this cancels another notum. Up next is the qualifier line. The qualifier line will always contain the following fields separated by a slash. The first four letters in your qualifier line is going to be the flight information region. All you really need to know about a flight information region is that it's basically the center controller who is responsible for the airspace in which your NOTAM is published. Up next is the Q code. The first letter is a Q. The second and third letters identify the subject that's being reported. And the fourth and fifth letters identify the status of operation of that subject. When it comes to Q code, the second letter, or the letter after the Q, will tell you generally what this NOTAM concerns. So any Q code that has a second letter of A is going to be airspace related. A second letter of C is going to be communications. F is going to be facilities and services. G means that it will concern some type of GPS. I means that it concerns the ILS or a microwave landing system. L is going to be lighting facilities. M will be movement on the ground. So think taxiways, runways, aprons. N is going to be navigational facilities, so TACNs, Vortex, VORs. O will be other information. P is going to be air traffic procedures, so that'll be your standard VFR arrivals, instrument approach procedures, and radio failure procedures. R will be airspace restrictions. S stands for air traffic and vomit services and a W will be in place for a warning. As far as the fourth and fifth letter goes, the fourth letter will signify the following. A will mean that there's something to do with the availability of the NOTAM. C is going to be a change. H is going to be a hazardous type condition. L will be a limitation. And if there's an XX, that means the fourth and fifth letter code does not cover the situation, and instead they'll just use plain language to explain what's going on. Up next will be the traffic type, where I is for IFR traffic only, V is for VFR traffic only, and IV stands for IFR and VFR traffic. The next field is going to tell you the purpose of the NOTAM. So the possible values for this are NBO, BO, B, M, or K. In this context, N will mean that the selected NOTAM is for immediate attention of air operators due to its importance. A B means that the NOTAM is of operational significance, such as briefings or pre-flight information bulletin. O signifies that the NOTAM is related to flight operations. M means that it's miscellaneous and not the subject of a briefing, but it's available on request. And K means that it's relating to a checklist. Then the field after that is going to be the scope of the NOTAM. So this is gonna basically tell you what this NOTAM concerns. So in this field, we could have an A, which means it's associated with the aerodrome. 
E is going to be in route information. A W is going to be warnings, such as a restriction of an airspace or whatnot. AE means that it's aerodrome and in route. And then K means that it concerns a checklist. Following that field, the NOTAM will be telling you what altitudes are affected by this NOTAM using the three digit flight level symbology. So 035 will be 3,500 feet and 100 would mean 10,000 feet. However, if the scope is an aerodrome, which means the preceding field is an A, you'll see triple zeros followed by triple nines to mean that all the airspace in the aerodrome is covered by the NOTAM. The next field is a lat long coordinates defining where the NOTAM is and then the field after that is just the radius surrounding those lat longs for which the NOTAM is active. This radius is expressed in nautical miles. Alright, so we just finished the qualifier field. That field is going to tell you everything you need to know about what the NOTAM generally concerns and where that NOTAM is located. Up next is the A field. The A field is going to give you the IKO location identifier or the FIR that is affected by this NOTAM. After the A field is going to be the B field, which tells you the time at which the NOTAM begins. Next is the C field, which is the time at which the NOTAM concludes. The D field, when applicable, will be used to show the daily schedule of that NOTAM. So for instance, back when COVID was really affecting us, a lot of approach control facilities would be down for an hour to allow sanitation between shifts. That daily downtime would go in the D field. The E field is going to contain the full NOTAM description. So everything you need to know about the NOTAM. The F field will tell you where the floor of this NOTAM is. Or if there is no floor for the NOTAM and it goes all the way to the ground, it'll just have surface written there. And unfortunately, there's no clever mnemonic to remember the G field, but just logic would tell you that the G field is going to be the ceiling of that NOTAM. And if there is no ceiling, it'll just be UNL for unlimited. All right, so to recap, I went ahead and pulled a couple NOTAMs for Randolph Air Force Base. And I'd like to see if you could follow along and decode everything we know so far. All right, so for this first NOTAM, the identifier is gonna be Mike0543, and it was published in 2021. It is a NOTAM type N, so it's a new NOTAM. And ZHU, I would presume that means it's Houston Center Controlled. QFGAS, what we're gonna do is we're going to go to the table and look up what FG stands for. And judging by the table, it appears that this NOTAM has something to do with ground movement control. Now looking at the fourth and fifth letter, AS appears to be unserviceable. So that means that the ground movement control is unserviceable. The next two letters, IV, denotes that it applies to IFR and VFR traffic. And then November Bravo Oscar denotes that it's selected for immediate attention due to its importance. It is of operational significance that should be included in pre-flight information bulletins. And O means that it's related to flight operations. The A means that the NOTAM scope is associated with the aerodrome. And then triple zero, triple nine means that it's from surface to unlimited. We then have the lat long coordinates of where this NOTAM takes place. And the last three numbers, 005, denotes that it is within a five mile radius of those lat longs. We then have KRND, which lets me know that this NOTAM pertains to Randolph Air Force Base in particular, begins in 2021, September 1st at 1600, and then the NOTAM ends in 2021, November 29th at 2359, so basically midnight. Then describing the NOTAM in the echo field, Randolph Primary 275.8 ground control not available, which we already knew that from the Q code, we need to utilize 338.35 in order to contact ground control. And then we have, it was created September 1st at 1600, which is when the NOTAM takes effect and the source is gonna be Randolph Air Force Base. 
you're able to follow along with all of that, then please be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, go ahead and pause the video and go through step-by-step -step decoding the next two notums. With that being said, here's a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by The Swaggo Shop. It's a project started by my wife and I, and we aim to provide custom aviation-inspired apparel for squadrons or military aviation enthusiasts. We're currently producing UPT-inspired apparel, so that's T-38s, T-1s, and T-6s, and T-shirts, but if you ask really nicely, we can do any plane you want, and we can expand that to long sleeves, hoodies, phone cases, tote bags, pillows, you name it. Just let us know if you got a group that wants something. Right now, you can follow us on Instagram, at The Swaggo Shop, or you can visit our Amazon Marketplace, where we sell all of our t-shirts. Just scan this QR code with your phone, and you'll be one step closer to our super dope T6 Texan Driver t-shirt, or any of the other t-shirts we have available in our marketplace. So once again, if you're looking for any kind of military aviation apparel, or you just want to help my channel out, please go check out The Swaggo Shop. 